Hello downloaders, Brandon Allen here, welcoming you to the Download Pre-Show Countdown. Brought to you this month by Generative AI by Getty Images. Commercially safe, impactful, and worry-free, Generative AI by Getty Images pairs our fast content and data with NVIDIA's powerful AI technology to unlock endless possibilities for ideation and creation of original content. With frequent updates, some that you will see on today's show, bringing your ideas to life or refining them into the perfect original image has never been easier. Reach out to your Getty Images representative to learn more. All right, folks, as you can see, we're just moments away from the start of the show. But first, I'm gonna answer a few questions that you might have regarding the download. First question, is this live? Yes and no. <laughs> There's a few portions of this program have been pre-recorded, but we will have a live Q&A session just a little bit later in the show. So don't forget to leave your questions below. Is this session being recorded? Absolutely yes. And we would love for you to share with your friends and colleagues as well. You can find today's session and all past episodes, including even more featuring generative AI over on the download show page. Last but not least, who do I contact with questions about adding Gen AI content to my creative mix? Great question, and you can reach out to your Getty Images rep with any questions you have about generative AI or any of our other products or services. Not a customer yet? That's okay. Don't know who your rep is? That's fine as well. Simply email us at the download at gettyimages.com and we'll be more than happy to help. All right, folks, that's my time. This has been the Download Pre-Show Countdown, brought to you by Generative AI by Getty Images. Thank you so much for watching. Now here with today's agenda is your host, the amazing Jennifer Kelly. Thanks, Brandon. And as always, great job at counting down. I swear it's like New Year's Eve with you every <laughs> single episode. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, everybody. On today's program, we're showing you the latest updates to Generative AI by Getty Images and telling you what that means for your creative palette, previewing some of the features coming soon, and answering your questions live in our Q&A. The download presented by Getty Images starts now. Hi, I'm Jennifer Kelly, Customer Success Manager, welcoming you to today's episode of the download presented by Getty Images. First things first, I wanna give a big shout out to all of our current Getty Images customers and thank you for your business. We truly appreciate it. Don't forget to drop your questions below. We'll answer them later in the program. Today, we're going to review the latest updates to generative AI by Getty Images and show you how they can further enhance your creativity. Let's jump right into the download's top four things to know about our latest generative AI updates. Joining me today are veteran downloaders, Susan Namakos and Carissa Lelock. Welcome back to the program, ladies. Always happy to have experts here with us. Thank you for having us again. Excited to be here. Thanks, Jen. You're welcome. And jumping right in with our countdown. Number four, you can have greater control over the composition of your images. Ladies, can you tell us a little bit more about what we mean by that? This is a feedback we've been hearing from our customers for quite some time now, uh, just about the ability to have greater control of their outputs, uh, especially around uh, the way that the visuals are presented, camera angles. Uh, but Carissa, take us through more in detail about what this capability offers our customers. Yep, it's all about camera control. So um, this new feature that comes along with the new model is going to give you four options for controlling what is essentially the camera. So you'll get shallow and deep lens type. So that'll let you see more or less of the scene and your subject. And then we'll also um, have wide angle and telephoto for depth of field. And those options let you kind of zoom in on your subject or blur your background. And they're really just another way that we're providing easier control over the images that you're generating. 
Perfect. Moving on, our next benefit on the list, number three, you can upscale your generated images up to 4K with greater detail. Why is that important? Well, all of our generations right now um, get generated at 1K and you do have the option to upscale to 4K, but there have been some noticeable improvements to the output. Um, Carissa, if you wouldn't mind just taking us through some of the enhancements to the 4K upscaling process. This is one of the improvements that I'm super excited about, and I think it's something that customers are going to really notice when they're generating images and also when they're downloading. So when you're generating with the new model, um, you're just going to see improved level of detail. You'll see it in all aspects of your image. But then when you're upscaling, that quality, that high quality and the fidelity and the detail is going to carry through to the larger 4K image size. So that larger image that you're downloading is just going to be better quality. Great. And next on the list is number two. You can enter more specific prompts and generate images in greater detail. Tell us a little bit more about what we mean by that specific prompts. This is another feedback that we've um, heard from our customers. In addition to um, control features like camera controls, uh, the ability to really articulate uh, the type of visual generation that you want to output um, is something that we've heard from our customers. Um, if you're someone like me with very limited vocabulary and prompting, maybe the current limit isn't um, as bothersome, uh, but we do have a lot of creative folks out there who have a lot of descriptive words and details that they want to be able to have greater control of um, articulating in their prompting. So this new um, enhanced lengthened um, prompting will allow our customers to do that. But Carissa, take us through a little bit more in detail of what does that mean and how many words? I think you described it perfectly. Longer prompts mean more details. So with the new model, you get 250 word prompt length and you can provide so much more detail and description there. Um, it's all about giving you more control of your generations here too. Um, the second thing that is related to this is that the new model just adheres even more closely to your prompt. So not only do you have more words to describe what you wanna see in the image, um, you're also going to get a better match in those final generations to the prompt and all the, the descriptions that you've provided. And of course, to make it easier for clients, we do have the prompt builder uh, and it works with natural language. These are, these are all great things. I encourage all clients to give feedback so that we can continue to improve this and make it, you know, the best for what your needs are. All right. We're at number one now. So number one is you can generate new original images faster than ever before. How fast? Super fast. Um, I'm really excited about this one uh, because time is money and uh, we've all got limited amount of time in our day to do the things that we need. Uh, so having a faster performing platform uh, ways to work is something that always excites me. But Carissa, uh, take us through what that actually means. What, is, what do we mean by fast? Well, and who doesn't want things to load faster, right? So um, with the new model, we're seeing speeds of up to six seconds, and we expect it to get any even faster. Um, that's almost twice as fast as the previous model. So we're, we're really enabling you to create and iterate more quickly when you're generating. All right, everybody, those are the top four things you need to know about our latest generative AI updates. Now that you've heard about them, let's show you how they work. Our generative AI new feature demo is next. Thanks, Jen. Hi, my name is Bill Vaughn. I'm the Senior Director of Creative Operations here at Getty Images. And today I'm super excited to show you some of the new features of our AI generative model. Let's get right to the demo. Now the camera control is a really cool feature because it brings elements of photography into your generations, really allowing you to control the composition. So let's start with this prompt that I have up on the screen. This is a prompt I've been working on around a fantasy alien landscape with glowing mushrooms and a blue tone and a realistic uh, landscape. So first let's generate the prompt. And as we generate the prompt, it takes about six to eight seconds and we get back our alien landscape here. Now I wanna see different variations of this. And so now I'm going to come over to the right-hand side and use our control panels. 
Let's first show shallow. So I'm going to use this to click, create an a image that has a shallower depth of field. So I'm going to hit regenerate. And for those who don't work with photography, what this will mean is that it will cause the background to look softer and more blurred, and it will give you more emphasis on the foreground. So let's see what we get. So we get more of the background here as it's softer. You'll see that there's more emphasis on the foreground, and the images tend to fall out of focus. Now let's see how we can take the exact same prompt and change it with a new filter. So we're going to use the camera control for deep, and we're going to hit generate. Now, as this generates, this filter will allow you to see a deeper view of the composition and will let you see more detail into the background of the shot itself. So as this generates here, you'll see that you'll see the fields go back farther towards the horizon line and gives you a greater level of, um, uh, of camera control. So this is a really great one. Let's move over to another one. I'm going to remove the deep filter and I'm going to use this prompt. I've been working on a prompt about dogs. So a portrait of a dog um, looking at the camera, smiling in an urban location, location, sunny summer day. All right, let's hit generate. First, actually, I'm going to switch over to the 3-4 perspective. I like my portraits uh, to be in this perspective. I find it usually works really well. So as this generates, I'm going to go over and use the two other camera controls that are the wide angle lens and the telephoto photo lens. I'm really excited to show this to you. So let's see, here we have a portrait of our dog. These look great, but now I'm gonna come over and click on wide angle. You'll see it's added up here uh, to my prompting area and I'll hit generate. So for those who aren't, don't know photography, a wide angle lens tends to make the subject in the foreground larger while making the entire background get smaller and move towards the horizon line. And you'll see that camera effect in these pictures here, the large kind of nose in the foreground and the buildings moving farther into the back and disappearing at the horizon line. So then let's take this again, remove the wide angle and come over to telephoto. Uh, telephoto, and we'll hit generate here. So a telephoto lens, for those who aren't familiar, will compress the perspective. It will make the subject sharp and it will make the background more blurred. And that's exactly what you get. So you see the same dog portraits here but with a back, with a blurred background. And this is uh, this is really helpful for when you want to generate multiple looks with the same prompt quickly. So now I want to show you a couple different things. First, I'm going to come into a, this portrait of, let's take this one, this dog looks good. And I'm going to show you how you can now remove the background from your generation. So if you highlight over the modify panel and you go to remove background, you have this option to remove it. You one click remove the background and you'll see that you then quickly remove the background to it and it becomes transparent. And now you can now download this file as a PNG with a transparent background. This is great because now you can take your generation and easily drop it into any project. Now let's take a moment to look at the way the model adheres to longer prompts. So I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna clear my prompt window here. I like to write very long prompts. And so I wanna show you this one. I'm gonna summarize it very quickly. Generation, generation Z woman in New York City, bodegas in the background. It's just rain, so the ground is wet. She's wearing a jean jacket. She's on a mobile phone talking to a friend about who's going to come out and meet her for the evening. I'm gonna hit generate. I'm also going to change the aspect ratio to 4.3 because I find this also often works well for images that require some copy. Uh, as, this, uh, as this generates, uh, again, it's really fast, six to eight seconds, I get my results back. So this is really exciting to me because if you look at this prompt link, that's a really long prompt. It, I would even say maybe it's a short story. But you see the prompts are really adhering to what you asked for. So you see the out of focus signs in the background. You see the wet streets. You see people walking back and forth in the background. She's on her mobile device. She looks happy. She's even wearing the jean jacket. So this is great because the more descriptive you are, the better your results look. Let's go in though and show the way that the, it will adhere to the prompt better. So as with any prompting, you want to put the most important subjects towards the front of your prompt, right? So let's let's kind of come into the after the first sentence here. Say uh, she is wearing a large purple hat, and then there are many cars 
color in the background. All right, so let's do that and let's hit generate. So again, what we're doing now is, if you can imagine the prompt was, was started out really long, right? But now we're adding in even more detail and we're asking the model to adhere to what we want to see. And so you'll see here that we get back exactly what we were asking for. Now there are more cars parked in the background. She's wearing a, a, a large purple hat. He still maintains the wet streets, the, the, the signs that are out of focus. And it really gives you that creative freedom to keep building on your prompts to get exactly what you're looking for. So prompt adherence and prompt length, something I'm personally excited for, and I think you guys will be too. Uh, I can't wait to see what you can do with it. Let me show you another feature while I'm here. I'm going to go back to my original image. Now, I'm going to download this in 4K. So I'm going to set my, my download, and I'm going to download it as 4K. So as I wait, uh, I'm going to find that the, uh, the image takes just a few seconds to download. And when it's there, I will show you exactly what the 4K upscale looks like. So the 4K image is downloaded. And now let's take a look at the details. I'm going to zoom into this image so that we can see how this 4K image looks. Now, one of the things we used to see in our older upscale was more kind of noise and less detail. But here, if you look at the eyes of the dog, they're sharp, they're vibrant. You can see the hair and the details on the nose and snout. You can see the, the, the individual whiskers coming out of the dog. And you'll see all that great detail that really makes it look like a like a like a real like a real photograph, and it's really exciting to see this because this is something that we've been wanting to see for a while, and we know that customers want to see it, and we're really excited to bring this higher quality to you. So those are the new features that we have in our new V3 model. I'm super excited to demo them for you, and I really appreciate your time. Can't wait to come back to the download and show the new features as we roll them out in the future. And for now, I'm going to send it back over to you, Jen. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bill. And speaking of future updates, please welcome back Susan and Carissa in the Downloads new segment, Generative AI by Getty Images, coming soon. So Susan, I know we have a lot of work in progress. Um, I'm interested to hear about what you're most excited about. I do have some exciting news to share about our custom fine tuning service. Um, I'm really excited about our ability to combine multiple styles into a single model. So imagine if you can have a model that understands uh, both your brand's lifestyle visuals in addition to your, let's say, iconography or illustration styles. It can save you both time and budget. We'll share more information about this capability in future episodes. Um, if you want more information now, please get in touch with us today. Carissa, can we share more information about upcoming features? So there are two things on my list that I'm really excited about. Um, the first thing is the ability to use AI to modify images in the Getty Images creative library. So today we have refine and extend features in the generative AI service, and these allow you to make changes, modifications to images that you generate. We're going to take those features and let you use them on creative images from Getty Images. So um, that is going to you know, get you closer to that perfect image. And then we're also releasing background removal soon. So this will be one click, easy background removal, and you'll be able to remove the background from um, creative images from the Getty library and also generated images that you create with the generative AI service. And I know we're going to plan, we're planning on talking more about fine tune and these features in future episodes of the download. Thanks, Susan and Carissa. It's so exciting to see what our customers have to look forward to in the not so distant future. As a reminder, reach out to your Getty Images representative to learn more about adding generative AI by Getty Images to your creative mix. We'll be back with our live Q&A right after this. You can see it in their faces who they are, what they do, how they feel. And with our visual GPS data showing that 83% of people globally believe that seeing diversity is key to driving empathy, brands can use video portraits like these to tell more authentic stories, share more diverse perspectives, 
have a stronger impact, all without saying a word. Our exclusive video portraits expand on which stories are told and give previously marginalized models their turn in the limelight, a growing trend that one in four consumers want to see more of. The cinematic approach to these portraits drives visual interest and fosters an emotional connection. From tracking shots that establish setting, to low angle tilts that present the central character as powerful, confident, and strong, the camera position and motion become as much a part of the story as the models themselves. Here, the eyes add more context. Holding our gaze, we glimpse into their world, their experience, their emotions provoking a powerful sense of human connection and meaning. Well-crafted video portraits like these convey a tangible bond between camera and subject, something that can be felt by the viewer, provoking thought, inspiring action, or simply reminding us of our humanity. See how your videos can create impact by challenging biases and changing perceptions at visualgps.com. Hello, downloaders, and welcome to today's live Q&A session. Joining me now are Susan, Carissa, and Bill to answer your questions about what's new and what's coming next for Generative AI by Getty Images. Hey, all, where are you guys joining us from, from today? <laughs> hey, we're coming to you live from Seagraph out in Denver. Oh, Denver, home of Casa Bonita and a very unique airport. Look it up, downloaders. <laughs> um, we have over 500 people watching us live today, and we've got lots of questions already coming in. So we'll get to as many of those as we can. Whether you're watching us on Zoom or on LinkedIn, the floor is now open. We'll get started first with some FAQs to give our team behind the scenes some time to process your questions and get them over to us. So let's start with some of these FAQs. First off, let's see here. Uh, I have one here for you, Carissa. Uh, oh, this is a good one. What if I need additional help prompting to get to my final image? This is a great question because prompting is an art. What say you, Carissa? Sure, so we do have a really detailed user guide and you can access it once you're logged into the Gen AI tool. Um, and that guide is being updated regularly. And then depending on the size and the scope of your project, we might also be able to help you with additional um, resources. So you can reach out to your sales rep or customer care team and talk about your potential needs. Perfect, thank you. And guys, just keep those questions coming in in the Q&A below. Uh, next question I have here is for you, Susan. Can I generate images in my specific brand style? And do you have examples of how customers can use the, the new fine tune model? Yeah, absolutely. Um, fine tuning is a great way to generate on brand visuals. Uh, some of the ways that customers have used custom fine tuning is to train on their brand library to understand their look, the feel, um, aesthetic and tonality, as well as training models on their unique illustration style and iconography style or in some cases, combining multiple styles into one uh, model for simplicity and cost savings. So, you know, custom fine tuning is a great way to efficiently scale on brand content creation. Perfect. And we'll, we'll keep saying it over and over, but if you do have more questions about that, just reach out to your Getty rep and we'll be happy to, to uh, answer those for you. Uh, let's see. I have another one here for you, Carissa. Can I use the background removal functionality on the creative library? Good question. So right now, no, but keep an eye out because you'll be able to really soon. All of those AI modification options like refine and extend and background removal are going to be available to use on the Getty Images creative library in the near future. Perfect. Yeah, it's evolving each and every day. There's something new. So keep an eye out for that, everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bill, here's another one about one of the newer features. Can you explain more about camera controls and when I should use them? Sure thing. So camera controls are a new feature, which I personally am super excited about. It brings a lot of elements of photography into the AI gen tool. 
Um, when I like to use it, first, I like to use it to create variations on any given prompt that I create, right? So it's an easy one-click button to get a different look for what you're generating. Second, I like to do it for my artistic style, right? So if I'm looking to add more, say, area in the background for copy space, then I love using the telephoto or the, uh, the, uh, the shallow depth of field filters. Whereas if I'm looking to explain more of my story, I want to get a richer, uh, more defined background, then I'm going to switch over to, to the wide angle lens or the deep perspective. And that's going to really allow me to tell my story in different ways. And again, create variations very, uh, very quickly with just one, one, one button click. So that's, 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 those are the big features of the camera controls. Perfect, thank you. Uh, and Carissa, I'm going back to you for, for another question here. How can I use the content created by the AI generator? And this is a good question. So you do get a royalty-free license to the content that you create with the AI generator. And that means that you can use the content in any and all media in perpetuity for any use that isn't prohibited by the licensing agreement. And again, if you have questions, we're happy to answer those if you have specific questions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, here's one for Susan. What does, well, what do we mean by commercially safe? What does commercially safe AI mean? Good question. I think you see a lot of um, terms commercially safe floating out there. So let's talk a little bit about what that actually means for us. Our commercially safe AI is grounded first in the fact that it has been trained from clean data which is our creative library. Uh, there is no straight data or data from public domain sets or synthetic data. Um, it's just our creative library. Uh, therefore, we know that it is engineered to not generate visuals that would create legal risks by violating IP or artist rights. Um, and the generated images are backed by our legal protection. Basically, it means you can safely use images commercially and rest assured that you have our legal backing when you do. Great. And uh, downloaders out there, just a reminder, keep your questions coming in. Uh, Carissa, I have another one for you. Do you add any generated visuals into your creative library? We do not. So we view any of the images or the visuals that you create in the AI generator as your own, and we do not recycle them into our library for others to license or use in any way. Great. Chris, can, can I add something really quickly? I would just like to say, like, this is also a great reason why you want to consider maybe using the pre-shot library as well, right? It, it, you have model and property release content there. Um, we don't put AI gen into our, our collections. And sometimes, you know, we we put a lot of investment into our natural language search. So if you're looking for something quick and, and fast that meets your need that you want to know is authentic and real, our pre-shot collection is a great place to visit as well. Right. Let's see. Do we have any other questions coming in, team? Downloaders, just drop them there in the chat and we'll get to them in the Q&A, rather. Anything anyone else would like to add? Oh, here's one coming in. Let's see. Uh, okay, Carissa, back to you. This is regarding 4K images. Is 4K something that I can use in my print projects? Yeah, you can. Actually, I was wondering, Bill, can I throw that one to you to elaborate on a little bit? Sure. Yeah, 4K file size will, and for most case, like print projects, will be great for your needs. I think it really depends on what the application is going to be, right? So if you're looking to print something like in a magazine or a poster, you should be fine with 4K. If you're looking to print like a billboard size, well, then maybe it may not be big enough for you. But for most applications for print, it will be uh, it'll be great, and you'll be able to use it in your project. Thanks for that, Bill and Carissa. Uh, let's see, I have one here for you, Susan. Do you have any updates on when we can expect to see these uh, to see these updates? An update on the updates, <laughs> as well as uh, when we can expect to see fine tune. Yeah, um, the updates are coming very soon. Specific to fine tuning, it is available now. So if you are interested in having fine tuning conversations, reach out to us, and we'll be more than happy to take you through um, how it all works. Perfect. Thank you. Marissa, I'm going back to you. I have a question here. Is the use of Getty's AI tool included in the subscription fees for current customers, or is there an additional cost? 
So it is a separate agreement, um, but if you reach out to your sales rep or your customer care team, they can talk you through um, what those costs are and find something that fits your needs. Right. Uh, Bill, going back to you, if you generate an image and like and really like it, but decide you want it in a different camera angle, can you change the camera angle while keeping the same content from the original image? Did you get that? Do I need to repeat it? <laughs> no, I, I think I think twisty. I understand the question. I think I understand the question. Yes. So when you change the camera angle, even if you're using the same prompt, the image will look slightly different. It's a uh, it's part of the way that the model generates the imagery. It pulls from what we call a seed, and it looks different every time. So you will have a similar image with the camera angle applied but you won't have the exact same image of the one that you like so it's important that you uh you know if you decide that you like something like a wide angle or a telephoto lens play within that space for a while so you make sure that you get the exact image that you're looking for great thanks uh carissa here's one for you we we hear so much about video and how engaging that is is there work being done on generative mm -hmm. video um, I would say we're very interested in generative video. Um, definitely watch for our news and announcements, and we'll let you know when we have something to share. Great. Right. Thank you. And, and like I said, it's evolving every day. You guys see AI out there in, in the world. Uh, it's continuing to train on our Getty imagery, on your customer feedback. So um, it's really exciting time. Okay, here I have a question. Let's see. Uh, I think this one can go to you, Susan. Regarding fine tuning, would it be easy for the end user to train the model with the brand styling? And are there any restrictions on the number of trained models possible within a Getty account? For an example, uh, as an agency, would we be able to have multiple models for each of our clients? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, in terms of um, being able to train uh, the model um, by the end users themselves, currently it's a white glove support service where well, we kind of work with the client directly or with you in this instance, the agency, to understand the scope, the objective of the fine tuning, and then we will work with you to train our model. Um, in terms of how many models can you have, there's not a set limit. So as an agency, we can customize a model for each of your clients that you work with, or really each of the styles that you want to have a custom model for. So we're very flexible in that sense. Uh, reach out to us and we'd love to have a talk with you about your specific use case and how we can help you in the fine tuning journey. Great. Uh, Bill, I have another one here for you. Are plans in progress to create a sequence of the same photo using the same prompt? For example, if I need the same dog doing different things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so right now I will say that like consistent character um, like generation across multiple generations is actually something that's quite hard to do. And so in our base model right now, uh, you you won't be able to do that. You can't carry the same character over. Now, depending on, you know, depending on what you want to do, there are fine tuning opportunities where we can begin to do some of these things where we take a single character and then uh, fine tune a model where you're able to kind of uh, bring that across multiple generations. But for most customers who are going to be using probably our, um, our Getty Images website or uh, generator, you won't be able to ha carry the same character over between uh, different frames. Thanks, Bill. And we do have other solutions for that uh, if AI is not the proper tool. So reach out to your rep, let us know what your pain points are, and we'll work with you to find the best solution for you. And Jen, um, can I add one more thing to that yeah. too? I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this is another great example of why it's great to use the pre-shot as well, because we have mm -hmm. lots of shoots from our experienced contributors who are using the same model, going about their life you know, in different ways. So again, if you if you want character consistency, it's a great option. Absolutely. And custom content is another option. So again, reach out to your rep. We can let you know what's available. Um, Bill, you're not off the hook yet. I have another one here for you. Uh, the client says, we often need to change the clothing of the subject. Are there any tips you can share for getting the best results for that? Sure. So what I like to do is use the refine tool over the, the, the model's uh, clothing and then prompt the, the prompt, use the prompt field to describe specifically what I want. 
one mistake that I see people often do is when they're using the refine tool, they, they very carefully trace over the edges of the clothing itself and the outline of the body. You actually want to go a little bit wider. The, I think the refine tools work best when you actually go past the borders a little bit so that the um, AI has a little bit of sense of what it can play around with and, and can kind of, kind of have the freedom to generate the clothing. Um, but that's how, I, that's how I would go approach uh, changing the, the clothing color. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Carissa, I have another one here for you. Can you talk about how the credits work when doing multiple variations from one prompt using the various camera controls? So asking if you do uh, use that camera control, how does that affect your prompts and, and the number you have available? Sure. So um, each agreement comes with a certain number of generations. And each time you press the generate button, we're deducting one generation. So if you type a prompt, choose a camera control and press that generate button, it's one one generation deducted. Um, and each time you hit the generation button, that's true. Perfect. Uh, Bill, going back to you, mm -hmm. do we anticipate further improvements on the generation of people? So for instance, specifically hands is what they're asking about. Yeah, so we are always working to improve the model. And you know, one of the things that we always want to do is improve human characteristics. It's one of the first things that people as human beings, we recognize if there's something wrong or different, that's the first thing that jumps out at us. Um, one thing I'll say about hands, I feel like our model's pretty good at it, but there's always the option to in-paint or what we call refine as well. Um, so if you generate an image and it's just not exactly what you want, maybe a finger is off or something like that, using the in-painting tool um, or, or what we call refine over the hand uh, will often fix the problem and make your image exactly what you want it to be. Great. Thank you so much. Let me see if we have any other questions coming in here from the team. I know we're on uh, various platforms here. Uh, looks like we don't have any more for right now. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up. It's all the time we have for today. Thank you all for submitting your questions. Answers to anything that we didn't get to today will be posted on our show page later this week. You can find that on the Getty Images website. Thanks to our amazing panel, Susan, Carissa, and Bill. Special thanks also to Brandon for hosting today's pre-show countdown. Once again, brought to you by Generative AI by Getty Images. And lastly, I wanna say, give out a huge thanks and a fond farewell to our associate producer, Jamie Zarita, whose tireless efforts have helped us bring this program to you each and every month. Best of luck, Jamie, on all your future endeavors. We're truly gonna miss you. As a reminder, you can catch all past episodes of the download on demand over on our show page. If you have any questions at all about Generative AI by Getty Images, just contact your Getty Images representative, or you can email us at the download at gettyimages.com. If you're watching today on Zoom, there will be a quick survey as you exit out of today's session. So please, uh, we'd love it if you could take a moment to answer a few questions that will help us serve you better in the future. Thank you once again for joining us today. I have been your host, Jennifer Kelly, and we'll see you next time on The Download. Hey, Brandon, did you know that the Gen in Gen AI originally stood for Jennifer? <laughs> I love that. You know what? Jen, absolutely impressive. Jen AI, Jennifer, absolutely impressive. That's Perfect. I, I hope the viewers are, are, are enjoying this.